My name is Jeff. <laughs> What's up, gamers? Welcome to the Dungeon Discourse. We're here. Still can give our mouse to work. <laughs> Stoko having technical problems. Dude. Bro, it works wired, but People follow us while we're offline and we hit 200 followers. Oh, oh sick. 201, Ooh. actually, to be, to be exact. To be technical. Hell yeah. Nice. Be... It. Pog. God, my life uh, is terrible. Dude, any Nina Door subs in chats? Hey, Duke. Hey, OSG. What's up, gamers? Welcome Yo, to the Discord. The show chat? about the show. Where we discuss uh, in great length all the all the stuff that happened in the previous episode and answer some questions that may be submitted while Soko is chewing on some bacon, my boy. All right. <laughs> no, you're good, you're good. I love my bacon. I mean, Chrisier, better than... With a three-month sub. Hey, Chrisier. Good to see you, homie. Better than me. You missed right before you uh, undefined. I tried to drink my tea and it's still way too hot, so I just spat it out all over my floor. No drinks so... near the keyboard. <laughs> It, I saw it near the keyboard. It has a lid, and I spat it on the floor. Not my keyboard. It's fine. And then I cleaned oh, it up. At least, at least you were, were like, instead of, you went, I guess. Yeah, yeah I literally was like, oh. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we're here to discuss not only the last episode of Dungeon Select, the one before as well, because we didn't do last week, because I was feeling like shit. Laura felt like shit. So we were like, you know what, dude? Fuck it. We'll, we'll skip a week, and we'll do a double whammy the next one. Um, so we're here to discuss both episode 13 and 14 of Dungeon Select. Um, yeah, so to give you guys some announcements before we start, we are still raising money for charity. Uh, the month of November is not over yet. We have like five days left. We hit 1500 uh, a couple days ago. We're at like 1545, I think now? 46, 69. 46, there we go. Exclamation mark charity, if you have some money, uh, you know, that you want to throw towards charity, you have five days left to do so. And then uh, the charity event will be empty over. Empty your bank accounts, boys. Don't actually um, <laughs> but yeah, other than that, any, you guys have any, any, any announcements uh, you guys want to share with us? Uh, I started, tournament. yeah, poker tournament, Saturday. Uh, I'll nice. be streaming it. OSG, you'll be streaming it. Nice. Soko, will you be streaming or just playing? I'm just going to play. All I, right, well, there'll be various people I that are I've participating. I think I've given up on streaming at this point. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> So it's going to be fun. Everyone who's playing, basically the buy-in to the tournament is a donation to the charity campaign. Nice. We have 10 players right now. So that starts at a minimum of 50 extra pounds for the charity campaign. Oh, yeah. So that's exciting. There might be a few more late signups before Saturday, but it should be a good time. Awesome. 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 Um, okay. Oh, and there's a prize. Oh, yeah, the prize for the winner. Soko and I are co-sponsoring it, I guess, for, if that's the word. Yeah. Uh, the winner will get a Steam game of their choice valued up to $70, and Soko and I will be splitting the cost of that game. For nice, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. So if one of us wins, then we just buy the other person a game. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess so. <laughs> also, Dude. I've started my Dark Souls streams because that was a charity incentive. Next one's tomorrow. I, I, Hell yeah. I, Watch me lose my sanity live on stream. I never really watch VODs happens. back, but I'm going to watch those fucking VODs, dude. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> Literally, had someone message me last night with the person being like, I'm, and he was in stream, and he's like, I'm rewatching the VOD because I haven't laughed so hard. And I was like, that's really nice. I appreciate that. But also, <laughs> I hate everything. Dude, nice. when I need a good laugh, I go back and watch Laura's uh, Dark Souls YouTube video. Thank you, because it's. I worked so fucking hard it's on that YouTube video. video. I put so much. I wish I'd saved it. the VOD. I should have saved video your VOD. on like my whole YouTube, and I'm pissed off. About I, I anyway. should have saved like the VOD or two that you had of it, because it was. Well, I mean, they are so saved good. in the level select YouTube because oh, it shit. was a charity oh, thing, are. so they're archived. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck. They're archived. Where you watch those? They are. <laughs> they are up there. True. They're unlisted. You'd have to log uh, in. To level oh, as he says, can I add something to that? If the winner instead asks to donate the money, I'll double it. Oh, okay. So if the winner oh. would not want the, the Steam game, but instead say, hey, oh, shit. frick it, uh, donate the charity, OSG is going to double it. Okay. I'm down. Okay. If I win, I will happily ask for that because I know I'm getting a yeah, few games say, I have for no Christmas games to buy. I don't need. Yeah, I'm, Dude, I'm I mean, good yeah, for a I, while. I would have one game to buy, but I already won an Elden Ring giveaway, so I'm, I'm sorted. <laughs> oh, you won? You won an Elden Ring giveaway? Yeah, That's and sick. my buddy Jake, uh, Para, That's he uh, did like a fucking big like Souls subathon, Souls yeah. Carnival, as you called it, where he did all kinds of Dark Souls related things. And one of the sub incentives was an Elden Ring giveaway, and I won. Pog. <laughs> or, well, Pog. Lou won, but Lou was like, I don't want Elden Ring, so gave it to Dutch. So thanks, th thank you, Lou, for being awesome. That's so nice. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, fuck yeah, dude. Dude, um, can I gush about fucking Medieval Dynasty real quick? Sure. <laughs> God, I love it, dude. Okay, so I picked it up. It came out in, like, September. I don't think On they're not PC? done with development at all. Yeah. 
I fucking love it, dude. It's like playing Kingdom Come, but with like survival elements and you're not like really working through like a story per se. You're just like building your own fucking town. Okay, but do you love it more so or less than New World? It's different. It scratches a different <laughs> itch. Alright, fair. Right. That's understandable. Plus but, um, I'm gonna have like I yeah. wanna many hours I have in New World already. Yeah. Hell yeah, baby. Alright, so Let's, uh, let's get into it, because we have two episodes to discuss. So, um, last we left off, I'll give you a recap of the last two sessions, I guess. Um, the party, accompanied by their new ally, uh, the Air Ganassi, named Sai, ventured to the town of Streatham, an industrial town that is mainly the uh, manufacturer of all the refined ores, materials, minerals, gems... That gets spread through the entire uh, the entire province of Keldar. They also provide the Blue Sentinels, the the Imperial uh, Guard Force, I guess that that are stationed throughout the entirety of Keldar with their armor, their weaponry, and all that stuff. A very important town when it, to to when it comes to uh, just the overall like economy of of Keldar. Really, um, you traveled there to vent to fi find Yirden Fearkrog, the man in charge of the um, towns, villages, farms being burned down. You've learned that um, he is doing this as some sort of homage to the great war against the dragons um, way back in the first era um, in hopes of basically uh, kind of making it so that th in hindsight the dragons won and potentially hoping to make that an invite for the dragons to come back is essentially the uh, the mindset uh, behind it um you guys talked to the captain of the blue sentinels that is stationed there and got told that the owner uh, uh, of the tenth ring a magic shop in streatham uh, a blue tiefling uh, named Vendetta may or may not have something to do with it, uh, and you went to investigate under the guise of being a successful professor or just dressing yourselves up as somebody else and, and, and figuring out a couple of, like, investigations all happening at the same time, really. Um, well, which accomplished nothing, and the other one accomplished someone getting stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, to be fair, in, in Ethan's defense... He actually learned some valuable information. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you While know. While also <laughs> making himself a clear fucking like, like he's yeah. threat yeah. to the organization like, yeah. that he's needs to be eliminated. Because of his uh, things that Vendetta is totally in on something. Like, we know for sure now she's, she's a baddie to some degree. And, and he confirmed that. So, yeah. Um, I'm still so sorry. Brooks did it, uh, end up getting stabbed in an alleyway nearby. Uh, but by some quick thinking of Sai, he got escorted to the keep, and um, Lazarin was able to uh, pump some healing magic into him, saving his life. Um, and with this new information in mind, you took a couple of days to properly scout the place out, find any ways in, and that sort of thing. You figured out that there's an invisible patrol, uh, pretty, like, like clockwork every 90 minutes, stationing themselves at certain watch points around the shop. Um, you also figured out that there is some illusion magic going on behind the shop to hide the fact that there's a window open for the patrol to slide back into the shop unnoticed. Um, and Sai also found a little hidden journal that described um, that Fear Krog has made some kind of deal with an abyssal creature and has since then not become, been the same. And that this individual that works for, for Fear Krog is, is scared for his life um, at the moment. This also hit close to home for Sai because, as he's told the party, he is on the hunt for a shadow demon uh, that killed pretty much everyone that he, uh, he loved. And this seems to be the work of the same or a similar creature, which is um, an extra motivator for Sai to really, you know, he wants this guy caught. And um, yeah, basically, next session, y'all are gonna, you know, you have your plan, you have, you are ready, you've done your scouting. 
next session is going to be you guys fucking going in there and seeing what the hell is being hidden in that shop. I'm sure, we can slow oh, it down another session. Boy. Right, you're going to be there, right, Soko? You're here, next, you're here this Sunday? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, you're not sure? Still not sure. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Let us, let, let I, us, I, may, us know. I, may, I might leave tonight to go down to Florida. TBD. Okay. Wait well, on some buddies to uh, get back to me. All right, uh, yeah, just let us know uh, in that case. My mom's in Florida. You can say hi. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hello, mother of Laura K483. Who has no idea who I am. Um, Hello, Mrs. Krause. I know your daughter. <laughs> um, for you two, let's, let's start it off with, do you guys have any... Excuse me. Anything you want to, like, you know, any opinions you want to share about the last few sessions? Any questions you may have? Uh, anything? That you, Dude, do? we're best buddies now. I know. I'm, I'm really enjoying, because never... Like, if you had to ask me, uh, like, before the campaign, the first early sessions, like, who do you think will be the first person in the group that, like, Daigon started to really, like, maybe form connections to that wasn't Kess, would not have picked Jax. And even outside, <laughs> and, and then even characters aside, it's like, who is, would you, like, as Laura, most likely to be just ten, based on, like, play style and the characters we've had in the past? It's very usually not Soko, because it's nice that our characters are now them. buddies instead of, like, beefing as we normally do. Yeah, uh, it's, that was funny, because, like, uh, obviously that is a very recent, like, development, I guess, but it's... Yeah. Well, it's cute. it technically started in episode one because also True. in episode one it wasn't like a uh, oh I actually necessarily like this person but I went unconscious in episode one and Jax uh, brought True. me back up with the True. spider True. True. so I mean it was like all right I don't really know you but I owe this person a life debt and that's a big deal because she comes from such a small sheltered um, like community and tribe that and like life is very sacred because any any loss of life that is needless when there are only a hundred people on a good day like her village is a big deal and everyone is everyone so mm -hmm. someone saving your life is like you owe them a very large favor until you've repaid that so it was going to be like i'm sticking around this person until i can repay that anyway but now it's like maybe i just will because he's my friend no dude Dagon's just the best listener that's cute. <laughs> that's so cute. True, because that's what, that's what old people want, is someone who just yeah. listens to their stories. <laughs> they just want someone to listen while talk. they ramble. <laughs> True. And I mean, yeah, well, Daikon has no choice but to listen, really. Yeah. True. <laughs> and then also, it, it's also starting, he's starting to get kind of connections to, he is in ways reminding her of um, her mentor, Quan, who was the one who taught her everything she knew about, like the monk side of her, and who died only like two years ago uh, to her. So it's also kind of like, filling a little bit of that void too like there's Aww. lots of layers to it yeah i'll teach all kinds of monk shit <laughs> no but more now it's like she wants to learn your artificer shit and i'm also seeing because because partly because of the cat thing and the cliche like her, one of her personality traits is within reason like not enough like i'm gonna do something stupid that might get me killed like oh i'll touch this very obviously dangerous thing but she's very <laughs> curious and then she also just loves learning new trades because to try and make herself useful when she was young because she was so like the prejudice against her she tried to learn every possible skill she could to be like look how useful i can be keep me around so there were, she watched you back in the tent in the jungle make those like bracelets and now she watched you the day you're doing the forge stuff like she's fascinated by all your tinkering things so if, if if it happens enough and not like anytime soon but like months down the line i could see eventually depending if and if oh, jacks then lets her in on any secrets yeah a, a monk artificer multi-class oh, okay, that, cool okay that'd be kind of sick and oh my dude oh my god if you took the <laughs> fucking uh i forget exactly which one's called but it's like the artificer's version of like the beastmaster you could make yourself like your own like metallic pet cat <laughs> No, that'd be the cool. That'd be pet. cool. Uh, yeah, oh, I mean, we'll see where that where this where this goes. I guess it's, it's really it's enjoyable to see you guys. Uh, you know, because the party, this party is insanely chaotic compared to uh, the previous. Well, yeah, because Bell one. went from a headstrong barbarian to insanely curious fucking warlock. Mm -hmm. Either way, Bell plays the character that goes, "Can I touch it?" and does things. No Which is just what. such yeah, a part of just... Bell. Like it's hard to get rid of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm the same way though. Definitely uh, a little bit of Bell shining through, but in a, in a, in a fun yeah. in a fun <laughs> way. You know, so I'll say that. Yeah. Um, yeah, Fuck no, so it's bad. like, there's so many differences in this, in this group of, of, of adventurers compared to the last one. Um, it's really enjoyable to, to kind of see, like, which characters grow closer to, to which, you know what I mean? Because yeah. obviously, like, well, last campaign, we definitely had our, like, you know, we had the Brobarians, we had, <laughs> we, we had, uh, 
some like people that weeds, like each other more than the others. Heads, you know? uh, and this campaign is really cool to just see like, oh, it's not Koiba and Bell again that are buddying up. This time, <laughs> Bell is like buddying up, buddying up with uh, with that with fucking Duke or or you oh, and, or and it's Soko. Kes, Kes and uh, Brooks or Kes and Davian. Yeah. It's, it's almost like it's like Kes is kind of deciding yeah. which one to lead. Yeah, into like basically more, when she's on like... the outs with one, she like buddies yeah. up with. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's yeah. it's really cool to see. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm really enjoying this campaign so far, and just uh, it's been a lot of fun, just seeing the character development and and the stories and and all that stuff. It's uh, it's been a really good fucking time. Um, I have a question for you guys, right? Um, what if Brooks had died? What do you think would have changed <laughs> in this whole like story arc, this investigation? Like, what do you think would have gone differently? How would you have done things? I think Jax might have just pushed. They say, "Fuck it, we're not doing this anymore." Yeah, because I'd have been like, "Dude, we can't take like we we didn't even get into the real fight yet, and we lost someone." Like, I don't know, like the Davian and the Lazarin. Like, I know you're because this is kind of tied to them more. They're the ones who are most invested in the Streatham Fear Krog Fire Cult dragony people um i probably have been like guys we tried we were down to help you but this is getting like it's someone just died this is a lot i don't think we're ready for this i think we're walking right into their hands with the hey i'm here come meet me mm -hmm. and probably would have pushed to like let's not let's do this later let's come back when he's not expecting it and try and maybe get stronger first yeah i mean like brooks has been the one that Jax has done the longest mm -hmm. And True. like, though they haven't like had like a moment in a little while, which I mean, it's partially just because I can't be here every session for the most part. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Jax are taking that really hard. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, as soon as you actually start to really make friends with people, and then just one of them dies, like, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. Especially because it sounds we need, like we need to dip. Like this. It sounds like in Jax's very long life, there's already been a lot of loss, from what it sounds like. Like with the mention of like the, the wife and this pirate lifestyle you've alluded to. Like we could be, but she's not with you right now. So we're like, we, uh, something's happened there. Uh, it just, I don't, like, and it's nothing specific, but I get this. Like, at least Dagon feels like there's been some loss in Jax's life, and it's like he'll talk about it when he wants to. So I feel like that would also have been just extra sad. Also, it might have helped. There's at the moment a still like beginning, subtle, but like a growing, maybe not so much a rift, but like Daigon's choosing to actively distance herself from Kess right now. And that's also part of the impetus for like, I'll go hang out with Jax for the day and stuff. And that might have changed. Like if Brooks had died, it had been like, you know what? Life's too short. Like, fuck it. She, 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 she pissed you off. She did a thing that made you upset, but bigger problems. Like, mm -hmm. and it would have maybe just like squashed that. But that didn't happen, so she can still yeah, do that. Yeah, that's something that I definitely wanna, wanna 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 discuss and wanna talk about is um that whole Daigon Kess uh, situation. You wanna yeah. let's let's, let's well, unpack that a little bit. Because huh? <laughs> again, Kess is like told, told Brooke she won't care that I didn't tell her and they kept a secret, and Daigon wouldn't have cared that she kept a secret. Especially because I'm like, where you sleep, whatever, seems a bit weird. I don't know why you wouldn't want to tell me that. Like, do you think I'm going to murder you in your sleep or something? But whatever. <laughs> what hurt was the fact, because by the gauging the group's reactions and, like, Brooks making clear, like, okay, good, it's out. Like, it was clear someone knew before her. And these people, Kess has known for two weeks. We've been traveling together for a year and a half, basically, <clears throat> like, seeing each other the whole time. And yeah, like, like she joked, like, Daigon doesn't have secrets. Like, Daigon did basically tell her at the get-go almost everything there is to know about her and her life. But part of that was just because she was still in a very depressed and isolated and, like, lonely place when she met Kess. And it's like, I don't expect you to give that back because I know I'm damaged, but maybe, like, you don't have to meet me at that place, but, like, maybe something, like, kind of there. And this just seems like such a trivial thing to hide. So it's like, if you don't trust me with that, what is it about me after all something you don't trust, but you trusted this person after two weeks to tell them something that doesn't even seem like it matters. So that, or that's why- Or what else why. are you hiding that's worse? Or yeah, if, like, if that's, you didn't trust me with that, then what the fuck else don't I know? Mm. And, but it, it was more the fact that she could tell someone else knew. It wasn't so much that you kept something or what you kept, even though that was like a little bit, but that what she could have been like, all right, well, that's a little weird, but whatever, and would have 
wrote it off, but it's the someone else in you first and feeling a bit. Because also, Daigon's still very immature in some ways, because she, despite her age, she never really had friends. A lot of the like ways you would form social relationships mm -hmm. growing up when you're younger, she never had. So she's still kind of, in many ways, almost like a teenager in maturity level in terms of like, you're supposed to be my best friend and you didn't tell me. Like the way, like imagine like high school girls would get real upset about some of that shit. <laughs> yeah. Kind Wait, of how thing. old is Daigon? Daigon, I think is my age. Hold on. I think she's in, she's late twenties, I think. Hold on. I'm gonna just check the world anvil. Damn dude, we have such a young <laughs> fucking party. A lot uh, of about... Yeah, Daigon's 25, damn, but she, is, in many ways, she is the maturity of a teenager. Because Tabaxi lifespans are not that different from humans. I didn't want to play an age that was too far removed from me. Um, but yeah, she's 25, but in many ways with the social skills of a teenager. Dude, I love playing an age gap. Yeah, well, like, like being the old man is so much fun. Kisarin, but I didn't do near as hard as you did so much fun dude i think everyone should play an old person character at some point yeah. it's a blast yeah but yeah daigon also doesn't want necessarily kes to know right away that's why when kes there was just like the slow like there was a quick pause of like but then there was like a i think the daigon's reaction was a shrug or just went like okay and then kes was like see i told you she'd be fine with it and that was the other thing too it's like oh man she cannot tell that I am upset either. Okay, cool. <laughs> and she hasn't mentioned anything that I now have multiple times, like parties splitting up, taking watches, and I have not chosen to go with her. And that's probably the first time that's happened in a, all, over a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And she has not said anything about that. I think that's the first time, that was like the first time I'll campaign because I picked up on that and I was like, oh shit. Yeah. And it wasn't like, even it, one time. I didn't it think you were like mad at first either. Times. I thought yeah. like, oh, you know, Diagon's taking it pretty well. That's nice. And then I started to notice, oh, wait, she's not spending any time with Kes. She's doing Does that Kes thing even where know people that say she's, like, they're fine, the but they're holder? not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, especially not even just not spending time with her. It's like, yeah, you can go with, into a dangerous, like, you can go into this magic shop of people that we think are our enemies with magical items around, and I'm not going with you. Like... That was the other like that thing like she thought that said a lot, uh, and if Kes, Kes has care, no like, idea, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> I don't think Kes has picked up on any of it yet. It's great, but she's also <laughs> at the same time. It again goes to the, the emotional immaturity. Eventually, she will probably just talk to Kes. Like if Kes doesn't notice, eventually, he's like, "All right, girl, come on." Like I, I, I'm dropping all the hints in the way that I'm being an immature person and don't want to just say it, say it to you, but now I'm gonna say it. Um, but she is kind of, because also like, I think that would make her feel a little bit better if Kes then noticed and was like, hey, I know you said, like, cool, but you seem upset. That would kind of, like, soothe things a bit. Uh, eventually, she will just, like, talk to her. Because she's not completely willing to throw away that relationship yet, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and doesn't want to completely just be like, well, fine. Fuck you. We're not friends anymore. But you can't come to my birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Soko. Oh boy. I have a couple questions for you, or not a couple questions. I have one one question I want to ask you. Um, you know, you've been asking a lot about a certain pirate friend of yours. Hey, <laughs> so, it's a lot. It was like twice. Uh, it's it's come up. Let's just say okay, it, yeah, but it's come yeah. up, right? I just want to know, and you don't have to go into great detail. I can always deafen if you did. No, 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 you good. You don't want to swear. Uh, <laughs> Does Jax have a plan when he does get information that he can follow up on? Or are you Honestly, not there yet? I have no idea what the plan is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough. Well, because it's That's like, without kind. knowing which way it is, you can't really plan, right? Because mm -hmm. like, if she is alive, what the fuck am I going to do with that? <laughs> you know? I mean, like, I don't know, or but like, when are we even going to be able Jax to get there? Jax is asking about this person for a reason, mm -hmm. right? That's what I'm saying, but like, even like, when am I going to be able to chase that down? Because right now, we have like a couple things on the docket, right? And I haven't even brought this up to the party. Mostly mm -hmm. just because they haven't asked, right? <laughs> like, if they asked for what I was, like, you know, what I was doing, I'd probably tell them. But I feel like I've been pretty open with Jax, and it's yeah, kind I of feel like Jax weird has had many not secrets. keeping really secrets. Yeah. yeah. And no one pries. That's the funny thing. Everyone pries into every other detail of everyone else's thing and like studies every little detail. Jack's are like, okay. Yeah, okay, cool, fair dude. enough. It's so weird yeah. being like honest and like then people just don't question you. Yeah, I mean, I guess that, that comes with if you're, 
if you're um, obviously acting or hiding something, people are gonna pry. But if you're like, oh no, yeah, I went to the dogs and you know asked around about some some old friends of mine, they're gonna be like, oh okay, sick dude. Oh yeah. yeah, you know, I used to be married, but uh, you know, not not anymore. Oh okay, fair enough. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> then you're not. They don't even know that I'm not married. No, yeah, true. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, or if I'm married, something about something about, about, about your wife, like because you weren't we obviously always hiding know. something. Yeah. People yeah. aren't gonna pry because they're like, oh yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Right? Oh, then I was so yeah, all we know is there was someone he was close to and cared about in a romantic way at some point who is not physically here now. We don't know yeah, if it's and we used to death. Dance. We don't know if they divorced. We don't know if they just like like who knows. It's just yeah. So like was that's what I was wondering. So like say hypothetically, because I know obviously like, I have this. I have that Wait, stuff prepared. Yeah, yeah. No. I, I have that prepared. Uh, I'm just waiting for a a, a good Come moment to. You know, basically, it never's fun. Um, honestly, <laughs> but um, <laughs> hypothetically, you get whether she is alive or dead, right? Yeah, you get a lead of her like last known location. How urgently would Jax want to pursue that? I think one. It depends on how close it is. Because if mm -hmm. it's pretty fucking close, he's going to be like, Hey, guys, let's go. You know, it's like sort of on the way to this thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's pretty far away, I think he'd try to just kind of keep tabs more okay. so. Okay, okay. Because, <laughs> like, obviously, if she's alive, he's going to kind of keep track of where she is. Because there's no way she stays in one place for too long. It's just the nature of these things. Yeah. So with that, with that lifestyle, yeah. Yeah, in like you know, if she's still, I don't even know if Jax. That's the thing. I don't know if Jax is wanted for being on a, a pirate. <laughs> like I've been like, I, I was freaking out in the first couple sessions because I realized that I hadn't. Touch. I realized that I hadn't been like hiding myself. But then I, I'm so glad I cast side scale when we met that ship's captain or the the. It was the high seas. What captain you have to keep in mind. Captain Blackpaw. What you have to keep Blackpaw. in mind is that. Um, the high sea protectors and the blue sentinels are two completely different. No, I know, but the high sea protectors branches, died after oh yeah, yeah, branches Black of Paul law enforcement. There. So you not being wanted for one doesn't mean you're not wanted for the other. By the other. Yeah. No, I know. And you. That's have, why and I was like, has not revealed oh, himself man. yet to any high sea protector individual on purpose. So, you know. That's all I say. Like, all I'll say is the fact that the Blue Sentinels haven't picked you up or arrested you yet doesn't mean yeah, I know. the other side of things won't. Because, it's also know, why I asked you if it was a seafaring town that we were going to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, oh, I mean, I think it's pretty safe to fucking assume. Like, I, I mean, I probably come am. On. <laughs> like, how many Vidalcan are really yeah, out the Yeah, seas, right? Vidalcan pirates, like, those those stand out pretty fucking well. The other thing is, okay, that sounds like the name how, of does, like an <laughs> how does maritime law work? Am I allowed to be arrested off the seas by the high seas protectors? The high sea protectors, the way they work is they are, they have authority over anyone else oh. on the open water. The open water yeah. is their yeah. terrain. Yeah. Anyone does anything, they'll have the high sea protectors to answer to. Not the blue sentinels. Not the empress. Them. Damn. Uh, and the they empress. are under payroll of the empire, but they are their own thing. But yeah. They decide who to bring in. They decide the what to do with the, the prisoners. Seas. Yeah, exactly. See, that's interesting. So it's like it's like the FBI and the CIA, where one focuses more on domestic, one's more international, yeah, I guess and so. they have. Okay, yeah, yeah. So like, it's, uh, on land, say you're wanted uh, by the high sea protectors. On land, you're good. Okay. Second, they catch you on the open sea. You're theirs. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> See, that almost, like, that strikes my ego, personally, because now I'm like, oh, kind of want to flaunt it now, just to be like, hey, bitches. But next time the party okay, wants to go to the boat, if you walk into their like, fucking office, and you're going to be like, hey, guys, <laughs> of course they're going to fucking grab Ob you, right? Obviously but then, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like you have to worry, um, you know, 
uh, you're yeah, like too in, you're far like, inland. You're like there's in a no town, shot. like halfway up the fucking province, or even in Streatham, right? Well, like I'm probably Streatham, far enough away where it's yeah, like, like yeah, Eldon yeah. is a little different because they have an office there, but towns where there's no high sea protectors station or whatever. So that's where Captain Blackpaw's like stationed at, right? Like that's kind of like his headquarters. Yeah, I mean he is so. the leader of the entire fucking right. organization. Yeah. yeah. Random sidebar. I know Blackpaw is not. You described. Was he was he like some sort of like leopard like cheetah like the the uh, tabaxi a leopard pattern? tabaxi leopard, but one of his yeah. paws is like yeah. uh, black. But yeah, but I know that. But in my head, I now when I realize it, I now picture him as just a walks on two feet version uh, and a guy of my cat Bailey because I realize she has oh. one black paw and the rest <laughs> of her paws are like brown or like orange. You got like different colors. Yeah, no, so he's in my really head definitely now, he more like, like leopard. Like uh, <laughs> I just leopard, think of him leopard as tabaxi, like... but like his his I think his left. I think it's his left hand. Uh, yeah, it uh, makes me think of like a black bear every time. So I just think of like Smokey the Bear. But like Sea Admiral. <laughs> dude, Blackpaw's fucking cool, dude. He used to be a fucking sick ass pirate and instead of like being getting murdered getting hung, hung for being a pirate, the Empress was like, listen, you know, uh talent recognizes talent. We we could yeah. use someone like you for this new faction we're building. And Blackpaw was like, you know what, dude? I like living. Fuck it. <laughs> it's very much the logic of like, hey, you hack into the FBI or the CIA, you don't get arrested, you get a job. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. You'd like basically the opposite of what Jax did. Sort of. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Talked about I, I, you know, he was in this high sea protection and turned pirate. You know? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's true. True, yeah. Kind of wild. That would be <laughs> interesting. I didn't really that'll like, be think about that. The no. um, we have one question that got submitted regarding the one shot we did last week. Oh, right. um, we did the Shore of Dreams one shot, which is also very a little piratey. Uh, basically, the TLDR on that one shot is um, adventurers get lured in with the like fake legend of or rumor of treasure mm-hmm. um, to then get enslaved by this Triton uh, tyrant really who like rules this entire town the entire town under under her thumb any adventures outsiders the entire town is in on it uh That's get cool. enslaved and to, to like basically help her dig out or excavate this like underwater temple dedicated to some ocean god some evil ocean god um so th- there was this one like particular room in the underground temple was just like big ass fucking like con shell that like big enough to fit people like people could go in it uh and hunter omega uh used mage hand to basically go in there and dude the amount of traps it triggered was fucking nuts and they wanted the breakdown of the exact like traps that were in there so we're gonna i'm gonna quickly just go through it for the sake so of since they, don't, they didn't get to know the breakdown in the one shot like, no you just because hear, the like, mage hand went bang, in like, uh like... and because the, they were outside of the room the mage hand went in, and one of the things was what happened was, oh, the door shuts, so that they have no idea what happened oh, in there. Oh, so they have no idea what happened in there. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> so the trap is called a, a thundering squall, um, that cool. which Sounds has like a, name of a, shit. Uh, a complex trap level between five name. and ten, which is a deadly threat. Um, so the first thing that happens uh is active elements the thundering squall fills the room with storm-like effects so like a fucking maelstrom and fucking lightning and thunder and shit um then it does something called thunderous slam um which is the the door to the vault slam shuts emitting a thunderous boom um then it does whirling tempest uh the vaulted ceiling of the room suddenly fills with a wrathful storm the storm sphere the Storm Sphere spell is cast at fourth level and centered at the con shell. Uh, the lightning bolt targets whoever is closest to the con shell. Uh, each time a lightning is cast, all three motifs on the con shell will flare up in a bright blue light. Then it summons Storm Methods, which are like these like small little mental boys to fuck you up. Then it does something called Dynamic Element, uh, which basically it just shits out more Storm Methods and they grow bigger and bigger the more they get summoned. And basically at that point, if you haven't deactivated the trap yet, you're fucked. But, you know, there's more. Um, <laughs> it also starts uh, just constantly on repeat casting lightning bolts at people. It's a fucking... So do they have time to react or try and get out or do anything? Yeah, because basically the way you deal with this trap is trap is you go into an initiative. And uh, the trap and acts the on, both in, on both initiative 30 and 10 every round oh, it does two shit. things so that's basically Jesus how this Christ. works yeah that but because oh. because they went in with mage hand and mage hand can technically trigger traps if it's does something 
Yeah. They didn't get to experience that. <laughs> Damn. They dodged all the bullets. They dodged, yeah. they dodged, bullets. dodged yeah, like, all like the bullets. How, wait, how far into the one shot was that? That's like that's like in the like final room where the big boss fight also. Oh, okay. So that that sounds well, no, I, I was gonna say like, dude, if that was like halfway through, imagine one shot just ends halfway through, and you're like, oh well, <laughs> GG's guys. Love it. Yeah. So uh, that's the breakdown of the trap. Uh, I think OSG. Uh, question for the one shot before that. How much? Did, how much did you nerf? I think nerf? It's just nerf. Uh, I didn't. Yeah. I did not. He did not get nerfed. Uh, he could have like if shatter if you would not have rolled the natural twenty on your death saves. I think we would have TPK. Straight up. I don't think it would have been TPK. I think Hanzo would have just sold out and been like, I'll become yeah, your bitch true, and become true. the sidekick and let us all die. And then Hanzo would survive. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, that's what true. I think would have happened. Yeah, that's fair. But like the, the, the bad guys would have won. If yeah. if, the, if you wouldn't have been able to get out of your, you know, your unconsciousness, <laughs> I think the bad guys would have won. 100%. He did not get a single yeah. nerf. Um, and then Ethan had a question for Jax slash Soko about the knuckle dusters. Oh. oh. Dude. Yeah, Soko. Dude, uh. What 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 <laughs> made what made Jax want to make the knuckle dusters for uh for Brooks? For Brooks. Okay, so I think Brooks almost dying precipitated it. Like I was gonna kinda sit on it for a little bit. That then we actually had some sort of downtime as mm -hmm. well, which uh helps. You know? Yeah. Uh, being our tipster boy, everything takes a fuck ton of time, as me and Dutch discussed off uh, camera. Yeah, we've had some talks of uh, basically. Um, I, I mean, I can, I can whip up the fucking like. Um, yeah, dude, it's fucking like, it, it takes like five hundred plus something days to make a legendary item or something like that, which obviously makes sense, right? Yeah. Like, so the way it works is, um, if you want to cast or if you want to craft a common magic item, you have to be at least a uh, level three. It will cost you about 100 gold worth of materials and take four in-game days. Wow. Uncommon, 500 gold. Level three, it takes 20 in-game days to make. Rare, 5,000 gold. Sixth level, takes 200 days. Oh. Very rare, 50,000 gold. You have to be 11th level and it will take five and a half in-game years. Yeah, and if you want to make so a legendary item from scratch, it will cost you half a million gold. You have to be seventeenth level, <laughs> and it will last fifty-five in-game years to make it. I feel so like basically if you're some you of those really things... have to be like an elf or something like that that lives <laughs> yeah. longer to even make legendary weapons for the most yeah. part. Yeah, I, like, I feel like that's the kind nuts. of thing where you would have a time skip, like like that, like say yeah, for, well, that's in, the in, thing in campaign one when we had our three month time skip. Maybe you could have made whatever like the yeah. before we got to it's like things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, or if you're gonna, or if one of your like really wants to in your party, and you have a plan for like, oh, like whatever the big like we know this is gonna take ages, and you <clears> could <throat> do that. But damn. Yeah, and crazy. this math, these mathematics are assuming that a character um, spends twenty five gold a day for the creation cost, uh, and that assumes they work eight hours a day. On so if you try oh to push it to maybe God. twelve, you could maybe cut it a little bit. But yeah, it's, yeah, but that's also yeah, you're still you're still doing time. You're chucking out gold yeah. out the window so like it's yeah. fucking nutty dude i but think with the uh, with the release of xanathar's guide to everything they um altered a few things because that bit, i think that's when artificers kind of became like, uh a, no they came bigger... out with uh not right uh uh acquisitions Tashes? incorporated it was uh, the first time right, artificers were seen right. but that uh, artificer well, in xanathar's has guide to everything fired, uh so. it is now stated that because previously only characters that are spellcasters were able to create magic items. Uh, yeah. With Xanatar's Guide for Everything, um, you do not need to be a spellcaster, uh, except if you want to make spell scrolls. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's a lot, though. You have you you can gain materials in a you know throughout your adventures. And the way it works is, and I think I'll I'll discuss it with you, Soko, as well. By the way, basically, if you want to make a common item. It'll cost you 50 gold. It will take one work week. Uh, and the materials you bring, it doesn't matter what it is. Like, say you're fighting a bunch of, like, you know, basically, it says here, material CR range between one and three. So basically, you just have to scavenge materials of, like, yeah. level one through three enemies you fight. So, like, oh, we're going to take the scales off of this fucking alligator really that I fought. That. Yeah. Take the horn off the fucking Gorgon. Yeah. And use those to make the item that you want to make. 
That's you can do that. Um, That's pretty sick. Uncommon has to have a material CR range of four to eight. Costs you two hundred gold. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and it will take two work weeks. Uh, and like it scales up, and that legendary will be will only cost only compared to the five hundred k a hundred thousand gold, but has to have a material CR of level nineteen or higher. And we'll take you so fifty. Going we'll take you fifty like work weeks. So how many? Shit. How many like in-game work week? You know, there's Monday through that's Friday. Like year. So that's five days times fifty. Five hundred days. Okay, so yeah, you're looking at like three quarter, like nine months or so. No, five hundred days. Yeah, that's a year Wait. and a half. Yeah, it's like a year and a half. Two hundred fifty days. No, no. Work oh, week is five days. No. It's fifty work weeks. Oh, fifty times five. Yeah, two fifty. I'm stupid. You're right. Yeah. So like. A little, like a little over half a year, I guess. Yeah, like, like two thirds. It's of the almost year. nine months. So. Yeah. Um. So like, it takes a lot shorter, but you have to like but farm yeah, yeah. the materials so, like, yourself. Go, yeah, you have to go. Uh, I mean, to be fair, though, ten days in D and D by raw. Yeah, but like we have our own. Like, it'd be fun and shit, for so. the party to have little like you know excursions to go like, find. I, honestly, I, I fuck with this a lot because basically. You just use what you scavenge along the way to make cool shit out of, yep. which is pretty cool. Like I think, like if you would want to move over to this, I'd be totally down for it. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mix with it really too cool. might be good too, because like obviously, I think like the first one's better if you actually have like a time skip sort of thing. Yeah, but this is re- this is basically this is you like kind of cool, just like, as use you're the going. materials you find along the way and just use yeah. those to make cool shit, which I think is pretty fucking dope. To be honest, that sound real cool. Absolutely. Yeah. It's kind of what we already did, because, like, you know, you didn't make a magic item, but you, you know, you took the Gorgon horn and fucking turned it into a fucking sick yeah, brass I was knuckle. Like, I, I figured I could probably sell it, but I was like, ah, it's kind of lame, dude. Because I feel like I sell a lot of that kind of shit. And I was like, dude, how cool would it be to be at the bar? You've been drinking. You're in your car. <laughs> and, and you pull um, out your knuckle dust, and you're like, bitch, this is a oh, Gorgon okay, so horn. Cool. We are Fuck so, I this. We are so going to move over to this, and I'll tell you why. Okay. It gives you a. It gives me as a DM a a table for crafting challenges. Ooh, so every oh time God. you craft something, I get to roll, and something will happen. So for instance, uh, oh, your tools are stolen, forcing you to buy new ones. Uh, or ha, jokes on you. I can make tools appear out of thin air. Rumors <laughs> swirl that what you're working on is unstable and a threat to the community. So that will like oh. cause some like shit. Um, oh, I love this. A competitor amazing, spreads rumors that you look as shoddy and prone to failure. So that will like Oh well wow, fucking that's murder. That's fucking a bitch. cool, dude. I, dude oh, that's murder a bitch, cool. dude. Who's the fucking Karen? Who's the fucking <laughs> Karen, the Karen, dude? A dwarf clan accuses you of stealing its secret lore to fuel your work. Dude, that's fucking sick, dude. <laughs> Honestly, I can neither confirm nor deny those allegations. <laughs> oh, like that, um, that creates whole story arcs for the party to deal with because someone's all coming for like so our we are definitely moving like... over to the system, Soko. Uh, I'm down, oh. dude. And like I said, you don't have to convince me at all, dude. <laughs> that's fucking cool as fuck. Okay, boom. And all I right, think done. even like later on with my artificer, I actually get like discounted uh, costs for making. I think it's up to uncommon. Like they get like the gold cost gets halved or something like that. Oh, that's nice. It's kind of nice. Cool. Right. That's like eleventh level or something like that. Uh, one thing we've done with the others so far is uh, another round of trivia, but this time oh, it is. Before we just... do that, can I ask Soko a question? Sure, of course. I'll ask you a question. So, because I mentioned at the beginning, and obviously Soko out of character is like, "Oh, that's a cool idea." If eventually, like down the line, uh, Dagon did want to like metagame multi-class and artificer in games like i've just really been down for watching like watching all the cool stuff you make and like i want to make something w- like would jacks be like oh yeah i love this like teachings or would he be oh, like yeah. no, t- secrets my trade like sh- no this is my thing <laughs> i think certain things he'd be very open to showing you and certain things he wouldn't the like armor, basic things he's like, like my yeah, arcane sure. armor that he has 100 percent. he's never showing a person the fucking absolutely. thing absolutely yeah because like he knows at least, or at least he thinks this is a one of a kind thing, right? Yeah. No one's never done this. This is my trade secret, you know. Yeah. I own the pen. I yeah. love, I love the idea of like old man Jax just forging away and just like teaching Daigon the ways of the artificer. That is so fucking cool. Because <laughs> also, like thinking of like the armbands that Daigon got that I still have yet to use because encounters the whole that that you can use key points to like sling back a spell my dragon oh, band right. armlets or whatever mm-hmm. like thinking and then watching jack's work and knowing those dudes like eventually it's like what if i could make stuff like this for me like to make stuff that also relates to what i already do 
as a monk because clearly Jax makes more than just like physical oh, just, like, make, Jax like, makes badass things that are slightly weapons for yourself dude that too because also monks specifically oh have to God. use like monk weapons yeah. they can't use a lot of regular weapons so. can we make Daigon some like super dope nunchucks <laughs> fuck yeah dude yeah, those are those are Koiba's thing dude <laughs> yeah I mean I think Jax would be totally into it alrighty are you ready for some D&D &D trivia hell yeah no. so there's five questions just g generic D&D &D knowledge and, and like canon D&D &D lore <laughs> And then we have five questions that is like a, a race quick fire round. Um, the way this works is I'm going to ask the question. If you think they know the answer, you can cut me off, whatever it is you want. You just yell or like make a buzzer sound or whatever the fuck to claim the question. If you get it wrong, your opponent has a chance to answer as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's basically how it works. So, we're, you know, keep score and all that stuff. The we have to question. write them down, like the first parts that are not timed, so you can tell we're not like cheating and looking at them. That's what we. Nah, wrote, it's, it's, no, I, I, I have, oh. I have faith. <laughs> oh wait, okay. okay, we're writing it. Well, down. Well, I'm okay. writing it down anyway now. So. All right, fair enough. Um, <laughs> so the first question, just like I said, as soon as you think you know the answer, just yell and then okay. answer, oh, okay. and then I'll, and then I'll give you the question basically. Okay. The campaign setting, Forgotten Realms, mostly takes place on which fictional continent? Why, you pull out the I, I, okay. I was thinking you meant like mechanical rules like not like the actual lore of D&D &D. oh, I want to say God. one thing you guys think I know way more about D&D <laughs> than I do <clears throat> Forgotten Realms okay fuck I know I this know. I, don't I know, know in, this too in non homebrew I... continents I don't know actual D&D &D places other than like I know planes like places, places like Feywild and like Realm of Nightmares and stuff I don't know I say, like, material I know Eberron... plane stuff I'm gonna give you 10 more oh, seconds you Eberron's, you Eberron's Eberron. own continent I'm pretty sure I'm gonna give you 10 more seconds and if no one is like buzzed in then we're gonna have... we're gonna we're gonna skip this I have literally nothing I, I don't, don't know, I, dude. Because there's like I, five I, different continents or something. Or I don't even know what those five, are. But I don't know, dude. Ask me rules about Time. Like, it's other... stuff. Uh, the answer is, is the... Faerun. Fuck, dude. Oh! I thought I've about heard it. i but... that before. Okay. Mm. Okay. Question number two. Everyone's just the city, I think. What is the only way to permanently kill a troll? Oh, ding. Okay. <laughs> uh, Through fire. I'll allow it. Uh, it's fire or acid, but I'll, I'll give uh. you the points. I'll give you the points. So that's that's one nil to Soko. All right. Question number three: Which realm does Strad von Zarovich rule? I should know this. You should. <laughs> I really should. Laura, you're the I vampire have... nerd. Not only that, I have a letter from the fucker in my backpack in the game. What? Uh, <clears throat> what is it? Uh, <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Can we pause no, the trivia for a second? No, what the fuck no. did we just say? <laughs> Nothing. Moving on. Hold on, hold on. Okay, I think wait. I have it. No, no, no. Are we allowed? Am I allowed to look back at my notes? Am I allowed to? No, 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 no. Oh, she just like, oh. oh, but I might have written it down in my notes. Notes. Nope. Transylvania. Why? That's why we wrong. use notes. Laura, Soko answered the question. He was wrong. You have a chance. You have a chance to answer. Dude, you're gonna fucking slap yourself after hearing the answer. <laughs> I'm naughty. Oh my god, I'm Zer stupid. Zerovia? Like, is that... No, I know what it is too Dude, now. Okay, fuck. Laura, Zerovia is okay. a part of Wait, this realm. Can I say it? But the realm is called it's Ravenloft. Barovia. Oh, never mind. Oh, I did know that. Oh, Wait, isn't it Barovia? It. Oh, it's Barovia, yeah. It's, it's when she said Barovia, yeah, I was like, oh, wrong. I thought, it, yeah. Barovia. Is, okay. is, the, is the, the name of the round. Dude, the fucking book. The fucking book. I'm so dumb. <laughs> I told yeah, you. That's why I don't know as much about D&D &D okay, as you guys think I do. Okay, we're going to do an easy one. So I need you guys See, to be I on totally your buzzers. I totally thought you just meant like about the actual mechanics of Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to, this is an easy one. Just get, get to your buzzers, all right? All right, I'm ready. <laughs> Which other word is used to describe... Or to, you know, which other word is a name for the creature known as Mind Flayers? Oh, oh! Illithid! Oh, I thought I was gonna buzz, as I did! Oh, well. 
Well, he can have it. Like, it's so cool. Like, oh, oh! Yeah. And if you want to claim a question, you have some time to think after you claim a question. You should just yell ding or buzz or whatever the fuck. You'll have a few seconds to like gather I your thought thoughts. I just yelling in general could count, but that's fine. That's my bad. Okay. I just, I'm going to shout Question number five. Which school of magic is known as a school that focuses on spells that allow the caster to alter perceptions? Oh, the ding. Illusion. Uh, Laura? Oh, I said, um, el yeah, uh, el illusion magic. Is it Correct. I'm yeah. giving it to Laura. I was about to say transmutation, and I was like, no, 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 that's actually changing something. <clears throat> so that makes it one, two, after five questions. Two points for Soko, one point for Laura. It's really important to not yell out the answer. Just first, like, claim the yeah, question. Yeah, I know. It's habit from yeah. school. You're um, still winning, so... We're going into the race quickfire round. So I'm going okay. to give you the description, the official D&D Beyond description of a race. Oh God, and you guys need to guess oh. what race I'm talking about. Do we just okay. yell out the race? No. Or do we buzz? Buzz. buzz. In. Okay, buzz. Okay. Yeah. If you yell out the answer, but someone else buzzes, I'm giving it to them. Okay. So That's fine. Fuck, dude. All right. The first one. Infused with magic of the Feywild, this race looks like small elves with insectile wings. Ding. So go? Fairy. Correct. It's they describe one. it as insectile wings. Mm -hmm. That threw me off. Because you can have like yeah, you can choose like what kind of wings you have. Yeah, you can have butterfly or like dragonfly wings. True. Okay. Strong and reclusive. Every day brings them a new challenge. Ding. Yeah. Tabaxi. No. So go. Oh, because that was kind of like the description. Okay. Strong and reclusive. Every day brings them a new challenge. Mm-hmm. I want to say like Leonin, dude. Sounds right. Wrong. No? Goliath. Goliath. Because see the challenge uh, part, because the tobacco. The one race I've never considered very playing. Very curiosity really. and always wanting to like learn and do things. So that's why I, I kind of thought mm -hmm. it was similar to the challenge. Thing. All right, so it's still one three, one mm -hmm. point for Laura, three for Soko. Yeah. Uh, placed in this world to serve as guardians of law and good, expected to strike at evil, led by lead by example, and further the cause of justice. Ding. Ding. Ooh, Ooh. Soko. Asimar. Correct. I was gonna say that, but I was like, Correct. a second behind you. Son That's of another a bitch. I wanted to like interrupt you too, but I was like, I want to hear the rest of this just in case I'm. <laughs> All right. War is their lifeblood. Glories and dreams inspire them, and the horrors of war don't feature Ding. in their nightmares. So go. Works. Wrong. Fuck. Oh. This is not a very common. Huh? Oh, is it Warforged? Oh, no. <laughs> No. <laughs> Hobgoblins. Yeah. Oh. oh okay. And finally, Sosoko, you've won already, but let's see yeah, if you can won. claim the fi like a fifth <laughs> point here. A race that are known as nomad survivalists, eager to, to explore the wilderness. That could be so many things. Ding. Mm-hmm. Centaurs. Wrong. I don't know. I, I didn't know on that one. Tortle? Correct. Oh, wow, good job, go. Laura. There you go. Got Laura one. going out I with got, a bit of honor. <laughs> you know, two points. I, it's, like, <laughs> these, like, overall D&D trivia questions are a lot harder than, like, you know, the... the, the I think we definitely sets. got the hardest ones yet. I thought it would be questions like, which class has the ability to do this? Uh, that's at what level, level, one was. At what level do you get your first ability improvement? Dutch saves those for the ones where I'm not stuff. on the episode. No, those questions Aww. have also, like, taken place, absolutely. But, I've you know, I, you know, there were some rule questions, there were some lore questions, and then there's five race questions. Like, the build-up or, like, the, the format has been the same. Week one was the easiest. Uh, I, the I feel like up. our questions were hard. That's it's true. Our, ours were definitely harder, up. dude. <laughs> fucking Faerun? None of those motherfuckers know that shit, motherfucker. You, dude, uh, yes, absolutely. Yes, no, <laughs> absolutely not. The only person that maybe knows is Koiva. Maybe. Dude. <laughs> I have no faith in Ethan. Chris Sear says he do. He, yeah, Chris, Chris Sear part like of the cat. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker dreams in D&D, &D, okay? Hunter knew. Get, get fucked, Soko. Pussy. Yeah, well, Hunter, you can go stuff my dick. See, my problem is almost all the d and I've ever played has been homebrew. I don't actually play a lot of the, or know a lot about the the worlds in that, that Wizards of the Coast made. So I'm like, yeah. oh, shit. Like, Faerun or, or Forgotten Realms is just, like, such a pool of, like canon D&D &D creatures and bosses and gods and you know like uh, most of the gods used in any homebrew campaign that aren't made made from scratch will be, from, based off of those. will be from the Faerunian pantheon yeah it's more the geography and the the creatures or the part I'm like I don't know a lot of those yeah I know a lot of the races of D&D &D, like I know what they are but not their canon description like I can give you 
what I know of them as. Like, totally, I would have just been like the turtle, the turtle people. I, I didn't know that that was the way, like, they're the part of their personality kind of described yeah. in that. I didn't know that. But I, I was like, well, I basically, you said that last question. I was like, I feel like it's an animal race because survivalists, animals, nature, it's one of those. So, which one? Pick one and I pick <laughs> turtle. <laughs> I mean, you guys did pretty well, like, and, you know, like, um, the fucking, uh, what's it? Like, the, I kind of would have expected y'all to know Ravenloft, I'll be honest. Yeah, that one is just I a blank, dude. Up. I'm so mad. <laughs> I'm so mad with all my, but part of it's because I, 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 cause I wanted to run a Strahd campaign, I and mean, this was a buying it for so long, but now I'm looking for... Like because of all the the problematic parts of the Strahd campaign and it mm -hmm. not aging well at all, I've been looking into alternatives that are like based on it, but without a lot of the really problematic shit. So I haven't actually been looking at the canon Ravenloft like Strahd adventure. Mm -hmm. That's for a that's long also time. why I decided to like because I, I canonized Strahd in our world last campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, like you guys encountered some of his followers and and you know what I mean. Like you you he yeah. exists. Um, which and the reason I did that is so that I can take, so that the we don't have to run that model. It. But like I can just take the best parts and leave all the problematic shit out, pretty much. Yeah, basically. Yeah. You know the worst uh, part because about yeah, this? there's a lot of there's a lot of fucking issues surrounding that particular setting uh, in current. The only year. other, I love the only it other though, canonized. Yeah, it's super cool, but there's just a lot of like. It is. The only other canonized D and D thing I would have is if you up. had stuff yeah. from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Cause that's the one physical book I own with James. I would have got shit from that. Mm -hmm. James has a ton of them in his room. Like he has the Forgotten Prince. He has the book that they introduce, like Ganassi. He has um another. He, he has like twelve or like eight D and D books like stacked up. So he probably has a bunch of these sitting in his room, and I did have Hell to yeah. look through them. But. Dude, and the race ones are kind of like a crapshoot because like there's a couple yeah, that are like easy giveaways, and then the ones are, like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it's gonna be like seven of the different races. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Like the Astabar sure. one was like, oh, immediately yeah. I was like, or the oh, uh, the fairy one, like it, you know, insectile yeah, I mean, wings. You guys, you guys did well. Like definitely, it, D and D, like the actual D and D trivia is like, if you know it, you know it. If you don't, you don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's just that's just kind of the way that works. That's what I'm saying, dude. You guys think I know so much? I just know more mechanical things. Like I know a lot of <laughs> spells because I played a wizard. Yeah. The one oh. thing I was hoping for was School of Magic spells, because the one thing, just because of all the us memeing Dutch whenever people dude, would ask I just what the ding. School of Magic is, uh. and Dutch having to look it up, I'm like, I actually know most, like, I like if you just name a magic school, I can probably tell you what it does, but Good one to of know. my, Good to know. my, Good to my know. fun, my, 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 there's always next time. Pride. What is <laughs> always next time? Um, so, with that said, I want to thank you guys for joining me this week. It's been fun. As always, I'll leave off, um, you know, we leave off the, the discourse with a little tease for what's to come, I suppose. Oh, wait. Oh, boy. Oh. I had a question for Dutch. If it's a, oh. it's a simple one, I forgot. Me and Koiba are paper pushing in the, the session before last while all this crazy shit was going down and Brooks getting stabbed. Mm -hmm. Was there, obviously don't tell us what it was, but was there anything, any really good either tidbit or lore or world building thing? Was there something really cool that we missed with our roles that we could have found or that we weren't looking for the right thing in those records? Are you like, I put something here and too bad for y'all? Um, besides some like, um, you could have gotten, you were specifically looking for stuff regarding you. Um, yeah. If you would have basically told me that you would have gone for a more like, oh, I wanted to see if anything stands out, like anything, yeah. you would have probably gotten the the description of some, you know, shady some individuals people. that may or may not be in the town that could provide you okay. with some things. But okay. Uh, other than that, not, not, nothing major, really. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> so this Sunday, you are going to explore um, whatever lies or whatever lair the Tenth Ring is hiding. <laughs> and uh, all I'll say is that this is going to be a proper dungeon crawl. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you go completionist style, over More 30 rooms... To, oh um, my to god dig through so this so. is the biggest one you've ever made yes it is the biggest it's at the least biggest, like for us in this campaign dungeon like room counts wise that i've ever made yeah 
Fuck, dude. Let's do it. We're completioning it. I don't know if we're high enough level to completionist this shit. We're, we'll mm. die by room, like, oh, 11. Fuck around and find out. Nah. <laughs> oh, my God. Fuck Just don't trigger any out. traps, forehead. This True. is how you TPK. Dangle us with this tease of, look, what there could be so many cool things yeah. in dude, all these the rooms. the problem is, we have, like, like we four people that are button pushers. <laughs> fucking me, Koiba, and Bell, all, like, pushing every little individual fucking thing. I know. <laughs> It's and then the Duke, if it's the right thing, Duke will push the button too. If it's a tier you and Ethan are like the only really sort of sensible people. Things never yeah. said before. Ethan's sensible. I mean, you could get lucky and just find the path to the boss right away. You never we know. We I don't want to find that path. Well, tough shit. It's more like, fun if, if I present you where you're in a room, there's three doors. One goes east, one goes south, one goes west. Right. You know, you're gonna have to pick I, one. I would like to find him right away because we fight him <laughs> when we're most fresh, and then we can still explore the place. And then if it's getting bad, we just know better. Or the DM put like the DM puts a mechanic in where the place just collapses when you kill the big. That's bad. my That'd worry. Shame. Oh. Yeah, it's like it, it, yeah, like the underground <laughs> fortress that had a statue that you could ask questions to and 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 lose your and fucking life for it. Yeah, that, that, like, that like statue was still one of my like most like like one of the best things I've ever put into a fucking dude. Movie. It was that my, so much party <laughs> tension, so much good like personal. <laughs> arc like oh that statue man oh uh, boy all right thank you so much for watching everybody soko thanks laura so thanks for being here soko happy thanksgiving buddy thanks guys and, and i hope um, you can be here on sunday too. yeah although maybe not if you're a button pusher maybe you can miss this session true <laughs> uh we'll be back here on sunday for uh session 15 yeah thanks for watching have a good night take care peace out gamers Later, later. Later. Bye-bye.